In this video, we're going to talk about ingress protection and IP codes, and more specifically about degrees of protection provided by enclosures in 60529 international standard. To make this video useful, we will also take a product to a test house and perform the testing to IP31 level, and I will explain what it means. Let's take a look at the EN6529 standard itself and if we open it, what we're going to find here is um, the definition of the IP codes that I talked about and specifically, and as you can see here is the explanation, the first numeral refers to the ingress of foreign objects, the second refers to the ingress of water and you also have two additional letters that uh, could also mean something, and this is explained in the standard as well. Then if we keep scrolling down, we will see this table that explains what each individual level means, and as you can see, as the level increases, it becomes more and more uh, protected against uh, foreign objects or water. So the ingress protection of level 3 means that the objects no less than two and a half millimeters are permitted to enter the enclosure and uh, if the ingress protection has a numeral higher than five this testing must be performed inside a so-called dust chamber which will have dust particles uh, blowing all around the enclosure for a continuous period of time and at the end of the test you will inspect the enclosure inside and see if there are any particles entered this uh, enclosure or not. So uh, if they haven't, uh, the highest uh, ingress protection against uh, foreign objects is IP level 6 and that means it's dust tight. Then as far as the water protection goes, there are in fact nine levels that can be applied. They are also explained here that start with non-protected enclosure, then carry on to vertically dripping, uh, dripping at 15 degrees angle, and uh, then uh, eventually you move into the spraying uh, the enclosure with a specific hose that uh, creates a lot of pressure of the water stream that hits the enclosure and effectively you simulate the power shower uh, that uh, hits the enclosure at different angles and uh, then you again look inside the enclosure if, and see if there was any ingress and also whether or not it caused any problems uh, because this is actually very important as I explained we don't have um, a very specific definition of a failure by the standard uh, what is a failure actually kind of depends on the application so we will define a failure in the specification for the test Additional letters would typically refer to the access of hazardous parts with a, a finger or a tool or a wire and basically the hazardous parts refers to mains effectively or anything that is higher than low voltage which is defined to be uh, 50 volts. Then uh, the rest of the standard is uh, effectively dedicated to the uh, explanation of how to perform uh, such testing. So if we keep scrolling, uh, we will see the uh, definition of illu and illustration of access probes that would be used for testing against the access to hazardous parts. And uh, this is the probe that would be used for IP level 1, this is the probe that would be used for IP level 2, and this is the probe that we will use for the testing to IP level 3. There you also have defined the force that has to be applied to the tip and as we will see we will be measuring this force with a special device to make sure it's in accordance with the standard. 
Typically, as the probe becomes smaller, the force is reduced uh, down to one newton, so that, which is barely anything at all, if I just uh, hold my finger against the surface, it would be probably more than one newton, in fact. So that is done so that this probe doesn't damage the equipment. Uh, you, you're not looking for, for example, pushing it into the display and uh, <laughs> basically scratching it. So if we carry on scrolling, we will also see the test means and uh, test conditions for the protection against water. And uh, so in this case, where we're going to test against IPX1, we will use a so-called drip box, which will simulate dripping uh, vertically from uh, this uh, box onto the enclosure. And the enclosure will be spinned on a turntable, so that means it will be rotating 360 degrees while the test is running for 10 minutes. Then, if we were doing higher levels of ingress protection, we would uh, apply either a, a oscillating tube or a water jet hose, and the water flow rate will be defined in this uh, table as well, so it is set to a specific value when the test is performed. Finally, if we were testing to IPX7 level or above, we would immerse the enclosure completely into a water tank, and uh, that is defined here with a specific water level, and it will be placed there for 30 minutes, and then uh, IPX8 would be even uh, uh, more strict, but uh, there is no definition how strict, it's just uh, said by agreement. Then the remainder of the standard uh, goes to describe the other test uh, conditions that should be uh, maintained during the test. <coughs> so this is the IP testing weapon. This, in this room, but things happen. We apply different methods to test against uh, the water protection. And um, typically, what I'm talking about is the IP ratings of uh, 2 and above. So, um, in X, 2 and 3 right, uh, where the first letter is the dust ingress and the second letter is the water ingress. So, um, for dripping water test, we, we use this machine here, uh, which just uh, basically, I don't know, mm, most water, um, and it's dripping for those tiny holes down the bottom. And as it happens, uh, the front table contains um, by some the text, which is um, uh, spinning around its axis 360 degrees and basically we will do a path test before and after the water ingress test and uh, we'll see if uh, it uh, passes the path test then it must be right and during path testing we will be effectively testing earth bond insulation test and earth leakage so um, I have a machine that is a 500 volt pad tester and uh, I will be using it to test uh, those three tests in a specific sequence um, before and after the water ingress test. And that is all just to check that the uh, um, water that may get into the device did not cause the uh, mains to break down. Then if we need to test for IPX uh, rating higher than IPX2, we would need to use something more sophisticated than just dripping water. And so we will put it under those uh, spraying uh, rings. Um, and uh, basically the unit will be uh, on a slide and we're going up and down. And um, that covers IPX ratings uh, three and four. And uh, also, if we want to test for IPX rating 5 to 6, we would need to use something else. And the something else is this machine gun looking uh, water spray, which you 
basically spray the device on the test uh, and it creates a really uh, powerful water stream so uh, you will uh, spray it as it rotates on a turntable um, because it has to be fixed quite um, quite secure uh, otherwise it will fall over and you will have different spray nozzles here so for IPX5 and IPX6 the nozzles will be slightly different so I think that covers the test setup now let's do the actual testing so the flow rate is set to one uh, millimeter per minute that is for IPX1 testing that we're doing which is basically vertically dripping water as you can see Much better. Yes, and there's no one. Did you want to take this spray? No, 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 it's staying as it is. Okay, stay as it is. Yeah, but yeah. So, very few droplets inside. Okay. Yeah. yeah.
so quick, isn't it? Yeah, no, you got it. Oh, wow. Unfortunately, after making this video, I noted that I've lost all footage from the testing of ingress protection of solid objects. Uh, so I've made uh, this uh, quick uh, video to show the pictures instead. So uh, to begin with, um, here is a picture of uh, the uh, dust chamber testing and uh, that is uh, the display inside the dust chamber. So as you can see, the dust has been applied all over it and um, that has been done for testing to IP5X level uh, because the display has continued functioning after this uh, test and um, so therefore it passed the test successfully. Uh, additionally, there was a needle used to uh, check for access to hazardous parts or in other words, uh, checking if you can get an electrocution uh, just simply by touching different parts of uh, the display. Then independently, uh, the test uh, to IP3X uh, level has been done by using this testing tool, which is also a needle, and uh, that is basically uh, set to the level of uh, 3 Newtons, uh, which is, uh, like I said, a light touch, uh, pretty much almost uh, unnoticeable, but it would be pretty noticeable if you touched a live wire. So this is effectively all you do, you just poke this kind of device at different uh, parts of the DUT and uh, check whether or not you get a shock. So it's like a multimeter, except it's using uh, a, a little needle at the end. And uh, that's pretty much all it was really, um, there's not much more to talk about and um, like I said, all those test tools are defined quite explicitly in the standard for ingress protection testing, so you don't really have to think about it too much and it only takes about 30 minutes to perform uh, that test, um, except uh, in a dust chamber you would probably run it for longer than that. I hope this uh, gives you a bit of an idea of what the ingress protection testing is like. Uh, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.